Good morning, grade 11s. My name is Miss Pereira, for those of you that don't know me or for those of you whose memory might be a little bit foggy. It's crazy to think that when I first met you, you were in grade nine, I welcomed you into my office and things were new and foreign. Fast forward halfway through a pandemic and my maternity leave and here you are seniors in grade 11. Um, I look forward to welcoming you back into my office and to hear about what's been going on in your life and in school and to offer any support that I can. Today I'm here to talk to you about your grade 12 options for next year. And with me today I have Ms. D. Giovanni who's going to be speaking to you about your literacy test results as well as um, Mr. S. Silvestri to speak to you about um, Schism and Mr. C. Silvestri to speak to you about Bridge. So before we begin with um, the option advice sheet, I'm going to pass it over to Ms. D. Giovanni. Good morning everyone. As you may recall, you met, most of you were uh, able to write the OSSLT back in the fall. Um, this was the first time that everyone wrote a digital format. Uh, the results are finally in, but as such, I just want to share with you, we're distributing the, the um, results in a different way this year. Normally, people would receive a paper copy and you would see your score on that copy. This year it's a little different. EQAO released the results just as a pass or a fail. So as a, or, or unsuccessful or successful, I think that's a better way to put it. Um, so this year we are sharing the results in a different format. So I'm just going to go over that step, those steps with you right now. So the first thing you would have to do to check your literacy test results is to log on to my site just like you would with LMS, etc. Then you would select uh, My Blueprint. You may recall using My Blueprint in careers class. So it is the icon with the blue circle with the M in it. So that's My Blueprint. So you would select My Blueprint. Then on the toolbar, you would select High School. Then you would scroll down to the very bottom. There's a section on the bottom, as you can see by the arrow, that's entitled Literacy Requirement. And there's either a check mark that you have completed the literacy requirement. And if you do not see a check mark, then you were unsuccessful. This means that you will have an additional opportunity to write this spring. So details will be coming up in the following weeks. The spring session of the OSSLT will be uh, in May, the first week of May. So details will follow on that. So you will have an opportunity to write again. Or you may choose to enroll directly into the OLC 401 class to obtain your literacy requirement for graduation. I do want to share with you that I have never ever in all my years of, of helping with the literacy test I've never ever seen anyone not graduate just because of the literacy requirement. So please, if you were unsuccessful, please do not fret, do not worry. There are lots of opportunities to still obtain your graduation requirement. If you have any questions, you can see your guidance counselor, Ms. Pereira, your resource teacher, Ms. Walters, or myself, your student success teacher. You can also see Ms. Danielowitz if you are an English language learner. So help is available. You can see any one of us if you have any questions about your literacy requirement. The information that I've just shared will be posted on the Grade 11 LMS page if you need to refer to it again. Thanks everyone. Sorry, I forgot to introduce Mr. Silvestri, who will now speak to you regarding Mohawk Bridge. Morning, grade 11s. I'm Mr. Silvestri, and I'm here to talk to you about the Mohawk Bridge option for next year. The Mohawk Bridge program offers students the opportunity to earn two high school elective credits while attending Mohawk College for half a day. During your time at Mohawk, you would earn two college credits that would count towards any future program of your choosing. 
a typical Mohawk Bridge semester would be as follows. Period one and two, you'd be here at STM in class. Period three would be your lunch. Period four would be your travel time. And period five, you'd be attending class at Mohawk. Here are some of the major benefits for attending and being successful at Mohawk Bridge. You experience life as a college student for that afternoon. All of the other students that attend the college will be paying for their education. This program is free of charge and is sponsored by the Ministry of Ontario. You are taught by college instructors and get a feel for the demands and expectations of a college student. Students are provided with free transportation. Each student will get two HSR bus tickets every day. Students will be up two credits by the time they enter Mohawk College as a full-time student. And lastly, successful Mohawk Bridge students will be favored when competing for entrance in competitive programs. The three Mohawk Bridge options that will be offered next year are General Bridge, Tech Bridge, graphics and animation bridge. Spaces are limited each semester, so guarantee your spot by registering before the deadline. If you have any questions, make an appointment with me, Mr. Silvestri and Guidance. Thank you for your time. Good morning. I'm gonna to talk to you just a little bit about the SHSM program, Specialist High Skills Major. Hopefully most of you heard it in grade 10. Some of you heard more about it this year. A lot of you in grade 11 are already registered, especially if you've taken co-op and uh, that's going to be one of the keys. So just to, to refresh your memory about some of these points. Co-op is what is two credits that you would have to take and it would be part of the SHSM program by the time you graduate. If you've taken it in grade 11, that's great. If you're going to take it in grade 12, that'll uh, meet the requirements as well. It is a bundle of credits besides co-op that you would have to get. And again, some of them you're gonna be taking regardless, like grade 12 English, everyone needs to do that. Uh, grade 11 math is required for most of them. And again, everybody has to take that one. Okay, so, and just to, again, the six sectors that we have here, if you're going to pursue any of these areas after high school, they would include arts and culture, business, construction, health and wellness, nonprofit, and transportation. And again, each of those sectors would apply for all the pathways, whether it's college or university or apprenticeship or directly into the workplace through employment. And that means all the level of courses that Ms. Pereira is going to be talking about would qualify for the SHSM bundle of credits for you. In addition to the bundle of credits, there are some certifications that are required main ones include CPR, first aid, WMIS, those apply to all the sectors and then each sector may have something else more specific or relates more to that sector and then there will be a whole list of elective certifications that you could take. So usually by the time you finish your co-op semester you'll have had the opportunity to complete uh, all the required certifications. You may earn that at jobs or volunteering and courses at co-op etc. One of the other trainings is the ICE training, Innovation, Creativity, Entrepreneurship. If you're in SHSM, you will have an opportunity this semester. Construction and Transportation are still working on theirs now, and it's gonna be virtual for the, the rest of the uh, sectors as well that's coming up later on in this semester. Well, you'll do a few modules online before, a video presentation, and then finish off with an assignment afterwards. Next year, Again, usually while you're in your co-op semester, hopefully we'll return to face-to-face -face and it'll be a full day uh, training session for ICE. Okay, the courses, again, if you're not sure, there's four major courses and one related course for each of the sectors. We would need one of the major courses to be a grade 12 course. You could use three of your grade 11 courses plus one grade 12 or the other way around, one grade 11 and three grade 12. If you decide to take co-op a second time, we could also use those extra co-op credits to substitute for one of those five uh, major credits or related credits that you wouldn't be doing it in school. Okay, and 
think those are the main points. If you are registered in SHSM, you can follow on your MyPath. At the end of each semester, we'll show credits as you, after you've earned them, that they're part of the SHSM program. If you're not in SHSM and you have taken co-op or are going to be taking co-op next year, you can email me at sylvestris at hwcdsb.ca. Let me know that you're interested or you can book an appointment online and uh, we can go over some more fine points for you uh, that you can register. You can still register at any time up until graduation. Just that if we know ahead of time, and this right now is perfect because you can pick your courses to complete that bundle of credits. Okay. Uh, again, if there's any questions, uh, please book an appointment with me. Thank you. Hi, grade 11s. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go through the option advice sheet um, that should be in front of you right now. There's six questions listed, um, and we're going to go through those together. I do advise that you read through it on your own as well, as there is some important information relating to universities and colleges. So let's start uh, right now. So you might be wondering how many courses do I choose? So the number of courses is gonna depend on the number of credits that you've earned so far and what you want to do post-secondary. As an overview, a couple of things to um, keep in mind is that you need 30 credits to graduate. So this is 18 compulsory credits and 12 elective. If you're uncertain, it would be a great idea to check your credit counseling through uh, your MyPath app. There are two compulsory courses that you need to take in grade 12. That is English and religion. And if you have any missing compulsory credits, then they must be included in your grade 12 course selections as well. If you're looking at IDC for u courses, you can only earn one credit. And lastly, I know there's been a lot of buzz and talk about um, spares in your grade 12 year. So to be a full-time student, you need three courses per semester. So it's important to get informed and look at what we offer in terms of courses that you can, you can take. So log into your um, Path to Success and you're going to look at the different course lists. Click on the course descriptions as well as um, get acquainted with what prerequisites you need for those specific courses as well. So again, I did mention that there's two compulsory courses that you need to take. That's your religion and your English. So religion you can take at the mixed or the open level and the English you can take at 4U, 4C, or 4E. So this means then that you have up to six elective options. Now some new courses or courses that are returning that might be of interest to you include the iPhone photography course, rock band, world history to the 16th century, literature studies which is a grade 12 course, and also returning is the AP functions and calculus which is specialized. So when looking at post-secondary options, there is full disclosure of your grade 11 and your grade 12 results on your transcript. So this means that all attempts will appear, including summer school. So you wanna make sure that you are prepared and, um, and working hard, essentially. So let's talk a little bit about destinations. Your course selection for next year is going to be based on where you see yourself going. So university bound, you're going to be focusing on U or M level courses. College bound, you're going to be looking at M or C level courses. Workplace bound, you want to be focusing on getting work experience while in school. So we have our GLD, our GLN courses, as well as co-op and apprenticeship bound co-op experience um, would be an awesome opportunity as well as OEAP. So you can see um, our co-op teachers um, for more information on that. Okay, moving on to university requirements. 
it is really important for you to be researching universities and their programs. Admissions, what they look at is a minimum of six U or M courses, and this includes the prere prerequisite for the specific program that you might be looking at. So it's important to go to ontariouniversitiesinfo.ca for specific information on the university programs and the details associated. In Ontario, the minimum university average is above 75% for most programs. So they're gonna take your top six grade 12 university qualifying courses, including the required courses needed for that program. And typically, the more competitive a program, the higher the average will be. Also, some universities may limit the number of upgrades a student may take. So this is why it's important to, again, um, get informed. So ontariouniversitiesinfo.ca. Okay, if we're looking at college, requirements for admission vary depending on the college and the program of study. Most college programs identify specific required courses. Final grades in these specific courses, rather than an overall average, are going to be important for admission. Some programs require additional things, such as portfolios of drawings, questionnaires, or assessments. So for more um, detailed examples of this, you're going to go to ontariocolleges.ca. Now, most colleges don't have bonus marks or extra credit for university-bound courses. They're not more favorable. If you're applying to a competitive program, it might be in your best interest to take ENG 4C. This is assuming you know that you're not wanting to apply to university because you don't want to close um, that door by accident. But if you know that you are college-bound, then ENG 4C might be right for you. Many colleges offer four-year degree programs. These have the same university requirements of six grade 12 MRU courses, including the prerequisite. And if you're applying to an oversubscribed college program, then you need to complete the required courses in semester one. So when you receive your timetable in June, then you can come and check with me. Now, workplace-bound students. Think about the type of work that you're interested in. Co-op is a great option, and if you're considering an apprenticeship, again, OEAP is an excellent option as well. So you can speak to co-op for more information about that. Use your personal planning chart. It's always a great idea to work with the end in mind. So what do you need to achieve your goals? Research what prerequisites you need for the program choice for college and university. And keep in mind a couple other things too. You need 40 hours of community service and you need the successful completion of your literacy test or successful completion of the literacy course as Miss highlighted earlier for you this morning. Okay, you just had the breakdown from both Mr. C. Silvestri and Mr. S. Silvestri about the Schism and Bridge courses. So again, if you're curious or interested in that, then you can come and see them in guidance as well. So registration is to be completed by Thursday, March 31st. There are three things that you need. You need your verified registration form, and this was emailed to you a couple weeks ago, so make sure that it's up to date. And if changes need to be made, then email them back. Otherwise, you're good to go with that, um, that verified registration form. You wanna have your courses selected um, and put into your backpack in my path. And then lastly, the third thing is um, you need to pay your activity fee of $45 to School Cash Online. And that pretty much sums up everything. So read over the option advice sheet, research your universities and college and their programs, look at our course offerings and get informed, 
and complete this registration by March 31st. Now, if you have any questions or concerns, you need a little bit of help, please don't hesitate to book an appointment with me in guidance. Thanks, STM.